Hello, and welcome to this bonus episode of The Compressor Guru. We're experimenting with something. A lot of our viewers are also gearheads, and they enjoy episodes having to do with other aspects besides just working on air compressors. So we would like a little bit of feedback from you to let us know if you are interested in that. We have some episodes having to do with a war hero who's also a biker. And today's episode is a young man who is quite the go-getter. Ben, by the way, is building his own side-by-side. -side. And he's really doing some cool things here. There's a lot of thought going into this. I think this is a very interesting episode and I'm hoping that you're going to enjoy it too. So today we're featuring Ben By The Way and the compressor guru is going to be interviewing him and showing you the cool way he has been building his own side-by-side -side for In The Woods. And now, The Compressor Guru. Welcome to The Compressor Guru. This is another bonus episode with an interesting guy and big project. And we thought it was pretty cool and we know we're, our, our people are gearheads and you might like gearhead stuff. So we're here with gearhead. This is Ben, by the way, Ben. I'm glad you let us come in and take your project, take you, and so I uh, I knew you had a pretty good beard going. Did you trim that? No. Nope. Oh, okay. I, I knew you had a pretty good beard going when when I when you said we could come down here. I started one, <laughs> and mine doesn't grow like that. I'll get sick of it here in about a week and shave it off. So anyway, enough about beards. What is this thing? It's uh, my version of a side by side. Okay, you didn't go down to the ATV dealer and buy this. Nope, started with two pipes down the middle on some RV stand, jack stands so they'd be adjustable so I could level it out and bought a bunch of junk cars and made it all okay. into one piece. Let's, okay. Let's start back at the engine. What is What engine is that? That's a V6. I've never seen that side by side with a V6. No replacement for displacement. Amen. Uh, so, what is, is that a Buick or what is that? Yeah, it's out of a Grand Prix. It's the same motor as a Buick. Um, it's a 3.8 supercharged. Um, it's the Generation 4 motor, so it has um, electric throttle body. It makes about 260 horsepower stock. Uh, we're going to bump that up a little bit, shooting for about 350. Um, now, that's the engine's in back. And I see the drive train. You got a four-wheel drive drive train, and this you're going to only have you're going to have three speeds in reverse and one forward. Well, the uh, differentials are upside down, so they're actually so backwards. So when you flip the what do you mean the differentials? Use your hands. Explain it to the camera. Uh, so where's where's the ring? Where's the pinion? So, the way the differential sat in the car normally, say the pinion was on the left side and the ring gear was on the right side. Whenever you flip that upside down, switches the ring and pinion around, pushes it the other way, the okay. opposite direction of. So your transmission is still normal. Your engine's still normal. So you flipped your differentials, and so you, now you have three speeds in forward and one in reverse. Yep. And I know you got tires for you. You got these big, 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 big tires. Yeah, I got these are just mock ups for now, but these are about the size that we'll be going with. 37s, <laughs> 37, 12 and a half, 17 inch rim. Okay, so I know this is all iron, but, and it's not going to weigh anything because all you got is your frame, your engine, your drivetrain. How fast is this thing going to go? I know you're building it for the dirt, but this lot will run 150 mile an hour. In theory. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'd be making a street legal and seeing what it'll do out there. I'll probably take it down to Beaver Springs, 
dragway and run yeah. it down there and see what it'll do. But uh, yeah, it should it should be pretty quick for the weight of it. Yeah. So, do you have any idea what it weighs now? I don't. That's why I'm trying to get all the sheet metal on it so I can get some scales. Oh, okay. To weigh it. So that'd be interesting. Now, here's the, here's the sheet metal panel. Okay, may I pop it out? Yep. Now that looks pretty nice. And got a nice little. It fits that nice and tight, and you got a little recess here, and very nicely done. Did you do this? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, that one, that one, my dad did actually. Okay. Um, yep. So he's a good helper. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah we hey, got let, let's talk about yeah. let's talk about the help. Uh, where are we right now? Uh, we're by the way auto. By the way auto. In downtown Julian. Wow, the metropolis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna set that there instead of trying to set that back in. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in downtown Julianne, the metropolis of downtown Julianne. Now, this is a family operation here. Uh, it's you and your dad. And we got some shots around the shop here. You've got several cool projects. You got a Jaguar and a paint booth. You got a GTO judge set in here. That's your dad's. He's yep. he's rebuilding. And I see your dad. Went and bought himself a Jeep for a toy. No, that was that's customers. Oh, I thought that. Oh, yeah, the, the Jaguar and the Jeep were customers. Okay, well, I knew the Jaguar was customers, yeah. but uh, so you don't. I know you have two lifts, and you're oftentimes working on regular everyday cars, but it sure seems like you get cool projects here, yeah. and uh, that's that's cool. That's fun. Uh, so what what made you do this thing. You gotta come up with a name for this. <laughs> the beast or you know, the rubber monster. You gotta come up with a name for this. It'll come. It'll come. Okay. So uh what uh what possessed you to do this? I always wanted to build a rock bouncer, you know what they are? Yeah. So I always wanted to build one of those, but they're very impractical for around here. Yeah. You well can't get through the trails around here and I don't have the money to try to make it up the hill. And What's a, a rock and, bouncer? It's this, but a lot bigger and a lot more money, like $150,000 machine kind of thing. And you, you can go look around YouTube and look for rock crawlers or rock bouncers. And they take what appear to be fairly nice Jeeps with really spectacular undercarriages. And they climb these hills that are almost straight up. And... A lot of times don't make it. A lot of times don't make, make it. And, they, and then you see a hundred thousand dollars go, yep. and thick parts flying off, and panels getting crushed, and oil coming out, and you, you see this stuff happen. You go, they're one a years, no, two years, three years pay. No, they, they're one a bunch of money. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. and time. Oh, uh, and, and time. time. So uh, this I, is I, a we, four we seater. This last week, right? Uh, <laughs> Six months. About. Six months? Well, you're tearing at it. You've made a lot of progress in six yeah, it's, months. It's not as far as I'd like to be, but that's yeah. pretty good progress for six months, I think. Yeah. Now, what's the drivetrain? We talked about the engine and looking at the differentials. The tranny is what it's brand? A, it's a 700R4 out of a square body Chevy with a adapter to the 3.8, and there are different bell housings. Okay. Um, and then it's a 241 transfer case out of the square body Chevy too. Um, the front differential is the rear differential out of a 06 Ford Explorer and it's a Ford 88 um, and it, right now it's like a three something it's a 340 I think but I, I need to change it over to 373 so 373 gear ratios in the front and rear. Mm -hmm. um, the Rear differential is the front differential out of a Chevy 1500 95-ish um, pickup truck, um, again flipped upside down. That will be welded, so it'll be a Hobart locker in the rear, it'll be full-time lock, except they have a switch on the back of these, on these transmissions, or on these differentials that disengages this wheel from the differential. So when you're running down the highway. You're on smoking tires and you can steer. Well, it's it's for whenever you're not running at four wheel drive, it's in the original truck. 
If you're not putting power to that, those wheels will spin how they want to spin, but there's a little bit of drag there. If you ever had a car up off the ground, you're spinning one tire, you can hold the other tire and spin it, but there's drag there. So they have this plunger in here that runs a little fork that um, locks these two together or unlocks them for fuel economy, is what it originally is for. But what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to weld the rear and then I'll, I'll be able to go into just one wheel drive when I want to. Right. Um, well, it'll be two wheel drive. When I have it in two wheel drive, it'll be front wheel drive actually, which kind of sucks, but it'll uh, be all wheel drive. Is the uh, transfer case locking you in the front wheel drive all the time too? So it's just well, full time. Well, through. the rear end is now the front end. So right. if you have it in two wheel drive, it's going to be in front wheel drive. Oh, okay. And if you have it four wheel drive, then it's in four wheel drive. Oh, okay. I get it. So if, so if I wanted to just run around somewhere quick, I could have it one wheel up there, one wheel up there. Uh, the front, I'm going to do an electric locker, I'm pretty sure. Um, I might go with an air locker, but I'm pretty well set on an electric locker. They're, they don't break, they're easy. I guess mm -hmm. you got to run wire, one wire to it. So um, Now I see four different uh, pedestals in there. You're putting four seats to it? Four seats in it, yep. Um, the driver's is adjustable. My girlfriend's quite a bit shorter than me, so she can't reach the pedals. Everybody's quite a bit shorter than you, <laughs> except me. It's nice to be around a big guy because I feel normal around him. All these other videos you may have seen, you'll see me standing that much taller. I'm, I'm not that much taller than Ben. It's, it's like we're almost normal. It's a nice change, isn't it? <laughs> so, now, let's, let's wander over in front of the other side. We got uh, something I'm not familiar with. We got an electric steering box. You want to explain this? Um, I'm not overly familiar with them either. This is the first time I've ever used one. Um, but basically, I have a an 08 um, Chevy Malibu rack and pinion here, <clears throat> and they're set up for electric steering. So, um, what they what's run into them is the power. You have to have power running into it. There's no plumbing on it, so you have to have a power steering pump. Um, but it also still has a high ratio of turning, um, unlike a manual rack um, that you got to turn six or so times. So you, you can are just one good turn and you're going to flip the wheels pretty good. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a three, three turn total, so one and a half is all the way to the right and one and a half is all the way to the left, if, okay. I, if I remember correctly. And then up here is your electric pump. So then up here is so that's where your power assist power steering's at. Right. And that's that's what most new cars are going to. This is a little different style than most new cars. Um, basically what it is is it's a gear in here. It's a worm gear running to uh, another I don't know what you would call that. I guess a ring ring gear. Yeah, talk to her. I guess a ring gear is what you call that. Um, and it has a sensor on this side that senses the pressure. Uh, that you put from the steering wheel and then it has a power assist that comes out and runs into the rack. Now, what's this for? Carrying your soft drinks? That's the fuel cell. <laughs> Orig originally that was all supposed to be one big cooler there, uh, yeah. but I had to change my transmission. So I ended up where the transmission's at was originally going to be where this was going to be, and this was going to be all one big cooler. But okay. Where are you going to put the radiator for the engine? Uh, right up against the two rear poles there. Um, All up here? No, down here. <laughs> right, down here. here. Right, right here. Um, doesn't look like a big space, but it's actually That's it's, funny. It's, yeah. it's a pretty good size. I'm going to run a four core all aluminum radiator. Uh, should be plenty of cooling, especially with only being a 3.8. So. Now, with you, you need to run a Transmission cooler too with that? Yeah, it has a built-in cooler. I uh, I have one. I just haven't ordered it yet. I haven't picked up, so I haven't ordered it yet. Okay. So it has it has an oil cooler. This because this engine being newer it has an oil cooler and a um, and a transmission cooler. Now your drive coming out of each side, have you shortened them? Because this doesn't look like a lot of room for where you. Well, uh, these are Ford Explorer knuckles. Um, so all, all, all the brake system and all Ford knuckles are Ford Explorer out of that 06 um, that I bought. 
Uh, so the outer knuckle, the outer shaft is a um, is the Explorer. I brought it in. I put it, put the shaft on the lathe, lathe it down to one inch, um, cut it off center of this. This is the 1500 axle. Same thing. Lathe it down to one inch, cut it off, and then that tube there in the middle is. Um, one inch inside diameter. I don't remember what the outside is, but it's 288 wall, so it's I think it's a quarter inch thick. I think that's what 288 is. Uh, but it's a real good heavy pipe, so I'll weld that all the way around and then pin it. Um, unfortunately, I can't get because they're so short. Like you said, I can't get the travel I want out of these um, right now. Up front, I with it being a lot longer, I was able to get the travel I wanted. But in the rear, I don't have a whole lot of drop, and I have a decent amount of up, but not as much as I'd like. So I'm going to be switching these axles over eventually to an axle. These have about 35 degrees of angle, and I'm going to go to an axle that has about 47 degrees, but they're $2,500 for two axles. So well, that, I'm going to wait for your Christmas bonus for that. That'll be, <laughs> that'll be once the whole thing's done, and, and I want to get a little more travel out of it. Yeah. I'll change that to that. And uh, I'm running coilovers all the way around. Then you're talking about the beast, or whatever you're calling. It. So, so your girlfriend's considerably skinnier than you. Considerably. And shorter. Considerably. You're gonna have to. This young need a step ladder to get in and out. No, this this will be a step here. Um, oh. Okay. It'll have sheet metal, like you saw, will be inside here. Um, and then I'm gonna put basically like a great foot step right here. Um, so you can step right on it, climb right up, and get in. And then have handles to get in. And okay, I have a question. You say that like you just put your foot here and then you step over. Mm -hmm. If her legs are my length, if my foot's <laughs> down there, I can't get over. She got in pretty easily when I had the seats and stuff in there. Now, how do you get in the back? Because that hole's even smaller than this hole. It's not too bad. Okay. <laughs> it's tight, but it's it's really not too bad. Um, it's once the seat's in there, you know, it, it looks tight. But it's, See, I can't bend like that. I'm fat pulling her through. I mean, it's that's really not bad once. Once you're in it, it is, it is tight getting in and out. Now you're a young guy, I'm like, too. <laughs> once you're in it. <laughs> you just have to do your morning stretches before you go. Before yeah. You're going to have to put Well, it wait. Before you come out of there, sit back down again. There's something I wanted to see. Yep, that's what it is. It's that smile from ear to ear saying, look what I'm building. How cool is this? Now, I take it you're going to take some pool noodles. You can come out now. Well, <laughs> and here and there and here. So back here, it's not built for me. It's built for my girlfriend who is much shorter up it, front. Is she going right up front? She will. <laughs> <laughs> but this back here, I mean, if I go riding with my buddy and his girlfriend, you know, it's always, you know, it's not usually going to be. I mean, if I'm back here, you just don't be an idiot and don't roll it. Yeah. But up front, you have, um, there's, uh, I think it's nine yeah. inches from my head to the bars. Okay. So it's regulation, because I do plan on racing it eventually. Yeah. So. I, uh, do you wear a helmet in this? Uh, if you're racing, or if you want to. Like I, like I said, I have... The front sits considerably lower, but I had to set the rears up high enough to uh, have the back, back so the back person can see some. Well, that and this will be dry storage under here. Oh, okay. So this will be a compartment that opens up right here. Um, it'll be dry storage under there. Throw soft coolers in. That side will be mostly tools and stuff, but this side will be. You know, we don't need tools. This not going to break clothes. down. That's the hope. Yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, you never know. If you have anything you drop, I'll get it for you. Put this in the middle. So, uh, so another thing that I changed it on this compared to regular side by side, I don't like. Um, is 
ever side by side other than that. That is a race buggy, has harnesses all the way around. So if you don't have somebody in that seat, the harness is sitting there and it's just clanging off. Of you. So, um, so I <coughs> stole these out of that square body too. Comes down through there, bolts onto that bracket down there. And this is for the other side actually, to give you an idea. Um, this comes up, so just a regular seat belt in the back. One important thing about this is though, usually on a buggy, the retracting mechanism itself is up here. No matter how much you clean that, after you've been riding, there's going to be grip down in there. So when you pull that out and go across to you, there's just gritty seat belt the whole way. So if you have this, you know, you have the whole length that would go across your chest that's out of this mechanism. So in theory, oh, okay. yeah, in the theory what you pull across. It's going to be up by your arm instead of, instead of getting right. the so, so the stuff that you pull out of there that's all gritty should be here instead of across your chest, which drove me nuts in my last one. Mm -hmm. um, and then up front, I will have uh, I have four point harnesses right now. If I go to race, I'll have to put the fifth harness in. But uh, the, you can add that that last strap that comes down between your legs. But if you've ever had a five point harness on, they're not comfortable to ride yeah. around in all day. So, so I went with just a four point for now. Um, that is important. Always wear a seatbelt when you're in a buggy. Well, we just did an interview. Was it? last night or two days ago and I asked Johnny if he had anything to say to the audience before we turned the camera off and he started on about three stories that all ended with wear your helmet <laughs> and but he's a yeah. biker and uh, yeah so always wear your seat belt always wear your helmet if it doesn't save you from the wreck it might save you from being in the wreck I, um, I was out riding in my last side by side I had and I was, you know, flying out in front of everybody and I'd switched around to a 180 and come back. Well it caught halfway through that. And it came up on its side. Because I had my seatbelt on it held me in place. So I was able to hammer on the gas and pull it back down. And uh, And that's why you're here today. Yeah, it would have been alright, but I know would have, would have scratched the buggy up, you know. But um it uh I was like, we weren't that far, my girlfriend was freaking out a little bit, and she doesn't usually freak out about stuff, so I was like, eh, maybe we were kind of bad. Well, I got out, and you could see where the rim had actually spun on the back, on the ground. It was that far on its side when I had to guess. So, uh, so I'm like, save me well, for Well, wear your seat belts. I lost a cousin, and I know a couple guys that died in Jeeps, but I lost a cousin, didn't have a seat belt on, and Jeep came out. It rolled, on, and the... the Roll bar crushed them. Yeah. Yep. So. Also, keep your feet inside the Jeep. You know, a couple people that stuck their foot out and the Jeep rolled onto their foot. That's, so they stayed in the vehicle, but the. That's going to ruin their day. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a bad way to end the day. So. Okay. Well, let's uh, go back over here and sit down and we'll talk about some more stuff. All right. Thanks, Ben. Don't all break for her all the time. <laughs> I do. You meet the nicest uh, that, people in repair shops. That's actually one of the biggest reasons I'm building this is because I, I had an Articat side by side. Awesome buggy for the money. And it was a blast to drive, fast. Um, but I put $1,000 worth of parts into it in one summer because I drive like an idiot on when I'm out in the woods. So, so I built, if you look at these, um, so the rear is all high joints. Um, which replace ball joints basically, um, or ball joints and bushings. Um, and these are built for basically rock bouncers. Um, so that's this is a one. In, I think that's a one inch bolt. These are three. These are seven eighths bolts, and up front are, are three quarter bolts. Um, and then on top of that, you know, this was a five thousand pound vehicle. That's what that wheel bearing is made for. Is a five thousand pound vehicle, and it's going to be cut basically in half. Yeah. Um, so really, should never have wheel bearing. And, um, and if these do go bad, you just that out it to sixty dollar part. Uh, you know, just this piece is about right. sixty dollar part. Um, and then up front, same thing again. You know, they're ball joints designed. 
for a 5,000 pound vehicle to add the engine up front, I mean, there's really not a whole lot of weight up here. Right. Um, so, there are four Explorer ball joints and um, four Explorer wheel bearing with, again, these are made for full size Jeeps. Um, they're around like 43 inch tires, you know, so, mm -hmm. so they should be more strong enough. Um, there's something else I was going to say. Well, you, for anybody that's ever built anything from scratch, there's a ton of engineering here. It's not, oh, I'm going to throw this on, I'm going to throw that on. Everything has to be fitted and figured, and how am I going to make that work with that? You're, you're doing some knockout stuff here. Have you ever built anything like this before, or just all the projects that happen here at work? Uh, i got a mud truck. Um, but it was kind of, it was a 91 um, Ford Bronco 302 with a 5 speed. Uh, body was too big to get through the woods, so cut the whole body off except for the floor. Uh, I went to a junkyard, I spent $25 on a 40s cab and a 50s bed. I, was, I think I spent like $15. I actually ran over with a skid steer and beat the crap out of it and <laughs> welded everything on there, and that's how I learned to weld. But it's on 38s, and I built a roll cage for it. Um, and then I have a 59 Chevy. Um, and the only thing that is original on it is the middle section of the cab and the frame itself. Um, it's got a big block 454 with a MB4500 behind that to a 01 HD rear diff. Front axle is out of 55 Chevy, uh, all new disc brakes all the way around. The whole front clip is from Arizona. The, whole, the bed's from a different truck, so it's not a whole lot. So there's a lot of fab and, and getting the engine and the brakes and all that stuff set up in that truck. I saw you going to State College one day. We used to drive Uber, and I, mm -hmm. I saw you cruising town in that. I'm like, boy, if I ever want to go cruise town, that's the kind of vehicle to do it. It's, it's a blast. <laughs> no, it's a blast. <laughs> Turn every head it sees it. <laughs> so, now 454 will walk and talk on it. It, yeah, <laughs> it runs all right. It's, I mean, it's a big, heavy truck, so I mean, you don't want to be so fast with a big, heavy truck. Yeah. But it likes Mustangs. Mustangs, yeah. <laughs> Mustangs are usually like Eats them, doesn't it? We know all of them, but. but uh, Wait, it surprises them. Sometimes, yeah. It uh, depends on what they are. Okay. Well, and you're humble, too. I like that. <laughs> well, I imagine Kim. Kim's a state. He, he beats it into me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear Kim telling him, "That's too big a truck to run hard." I just, I, there's that's your dad coming out and you. <laughs> that's a good thing. So, well, I'll tell you what. This is an awesome project. Can we come back when you're done or almost done and get no, another? That's we'll, do, be, we'll do part B of this bonus episode. All righty. And that'll be about a week, right? Uh, <laughs> so maybe something like that. We'll so, see. Uh, do you want to say anything to uh, the YouTube audience, the Compressor Gurus audience? Uh, by the way, uh, well, take a picture of that machine up there. I did. Okay, that's uh, we sold them that machine new, and uh, Kim is a stickler for buying American-made and buying good stuff and. Uh, he went the extra mile to get that one, and we'll take care of him. Now, your dad has a project right here. Do you want to just give a quick overview of that project, or? Uh, so it's a 1970 GTO Judge, 400 with a four-speed. Uh, he bought it when he was 15. Ran it around. Um, well, actually, he bought this one was wrecked. And he bought another one that was burned and made one good car out of two uh, when he was 15 or 16. And he ran it till 87, I believe, is the sticker on there. And it wasn't, it was starting to show its uh, high school kid had been driving it for a long time age. So he uh, parked it and a couple weeks ago he found the parts he's been looking for for about 20 years and uh, he's decided to. Take it. He's, he wants it perfect, so this one's 
he's taking pieces off of it to fix those pieces, have them ready to go. And so he so I in took, here, took up a bay and yeah, yeah. I took some pictures in the paint booth of things that look like they came off of this yeah, car. Yeah, he, he literally just tore this apart this weekend. Uh huh. So yeah, that's. Well, I'll give kid will be all, all original. He, it's red right now, and that's what he painted it when he was in, in high school. But uh, uh, he wants it back to the original. It, it was white with a red top and the red or orange stripes over the wheel wells. Um, but all original. Well, I'm going to give Kim a call and tell him when he's getting close, we'd like to come down and do another episode here because you guys always have something fun yeah. in here. There's always something going on. So, uh, Ben, we appreciate the time, and uh, we, Val got a lot of shots around here. I'm not sure how much face time you're going to get. A lot of editing we do. We got a lot of editing to do. We're going to take and we're going to put some other pictures in of projects going around here. But uh, by the way, uh, it's strange to say that here. By the way, <laughs> by the way, is my upstream in Amsoil. We're in Amsoil. Uh, distributor, dealer, I don't know what my title is, but I'm something. You're a dealer. I'm a dealer. He's your distributor. You're a distributor. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm sold on Amsoil. I have been for quite a few years. It's very good oil. I'll brag about it for my Harley because that's experience. And uh, these guys deal in Amsoil, and this is a plug for Amsoil because it's good stuff. And it's reasonably priced for what you get. For the miles, yeah, for the quality. Miles, definitely. Yep. It's usually cheaper in the long run. It is. Especially if you count the wear and tear on the motor. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, a friend of mine, Cliff, put 100000 on his Harley. Run, never ran anything except the Amsoil in it. Put 100000 on it. Tore it down because he wanted to uh, add some horsepower. When they tore it apart, everything was like new. Literally inside the crankcase and the cylinder walls, there were still hash marks in the cylinder wall, walls and all the specs on the crankshaft yeah. were yeah. Uh, good Perfect. stuff. Oh, yeah. So anyway, Ben, I appreciate the time. We are going to go to the edit shop and we'll have Is this Is that its one. specific name, the edit shop? Uh, yeah, that's what my desk is called. Okay. Uh, this is the camera wife with Ben, by the way. and. <laughs> Uh, I'm the Compressor Guru with a bonus episode, and we appreciate our audience. Please leave your comments down below. If you don't, if you're not enough of a gearhead to appreciate this, let us know what you do want to see. Maybe we can make an episode out of it. Um, we got a guy building a two-engine hot rod. We're gonna uh, visit soon. Maybe not next, but soon. And uh, that's a real high-end project. He's doing a great job. So, uh, thank you. Have a great day. God bless. Thank you for watching this episode of The Compressor Guru. Please hit like and subscribe and use the notify bell so you will know when the next new episode is released from the Compressor Guru. God bless you and have a great day.